I'm only 17 years old. I'm well aware of the fact that I'm not technically an adult. But just because I'm still a minor, and maybe some of you are still minors out there, today I'm here to tell you that just because you're a minor, there's no reason that you should ever be dreaming like you're under 18. I remember it just like it was yesterday. I came running off the school bus that day, barely able to contain myself. As soon as I burst into the kitchen, all I could do was barely articulate myself to my mom. Mom, there's this program at school, I said. There are these computers that their kids are going to get from the in. Girls at school are going to give these computers to kids who normally would never afford them otherwise. These computers, Mom, they're everything. Can I go on the trip, Mom? Can I go, please? But even before I walked off the school bus that day, I was well aware of the fact that the trip could very well be a no. And just to what I expected, it was. So when I walked into school the next day, I avoided my technology teacher, who had told me about the program just 24 hours before. I avoided her like the plague. I was so disappointed that I was unable to go on this trip. Well, lucky or unlucky for me, I ended up running straight into her in the middle of the hallway. And before I knew it, I was spitting out the whole story about how I couldn't go on the trip to her at 100 miles an hour. About halfway through my story, she said, Sarah, calm down. You have to understand, there's still plenty of work that you can do without ever leaving Columbus. And that's when my passion for One Laptop Per Child was born. One Laptop Per Child is a program out of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, whose mission is to empower the world's poorest children through education. Little kids receive these computers all over the world. And provide, which provide them with the education and technology they need and would never be able to have access to. Since 2007, when the first of these computers rolled off their production lines in Shanghai, more than two and a half million of them have been distributed into the hands of kids all over the world. So since my parents told me that I could not go on the trip in September of 2010, as I was just a 15-year-old sophomore, I've been working on this curriculum for these computers that will eventually be sent out all over the world. That project of developing the curriculum lasted from September of 2010 all the way until December of 2011, when I was a 16-year-old junior. But somehow, deep within me, that December, I realized that even though my work with developing the curriculum was done, I knew I had to take my work with One Laptop Per Child to the next level. I wanted to make the project more personal for me. So I started to play around on One Laptop Per Child's website. And each of the places that you see a colored dot represents where One Laptop Per Child has touched the lives of children all over the world. I eventually started playing around, and before I knew it, I clicked on my family's home country of Egypt, the second most important country to my heart, and the foundation of my heritage as a first-generation Egyptian-American. And that cold, dark morning in December, when I was 16 years old, that's when I realized that One Laptop Per Child had not reached such a needy population. And it hit me then. I had to do something. There was no point in waiting. I started to remember back to all of the times that I visited Egypt. I remember sitting on the steps of the pyramids with my uncle and my Egyptian cousins. But then I also remember something much deeper. I remember taking the train from the pollution and busyness of Cairo and into the farmland and simplicity of the villages on the way to visit my grandparents' house in the middle of nowhere. All along the way, we passed these huts that were lined up against the banks of the Nile River, overlooking the river, and these people not only don't live without education and technology, they also don't have running water or electricity. I remember the Zebelin, the garbage people, the little girls and boys who would run through the streets day in and day out, digging through piles and piles of garbage to bring home any bit of recyclable material to their parents to contribute to their already minute incomes of $1.65 per day. The foundation of the Zebelin lifestyle, the garbage people's lifestyle, has become such an important part of their lives that schools have traded true education, the things that we learn in school, for anything that will help these kids, starting at the ages of six and seven years old, contribute to crafting garbage into sellable treasures with their parents. So while I sat in front of the computer that day in December, I realized 
that if I didn't take upon myself to bring one laptop per child to Egypt, if I just waited for someone else to do it for me, who knows how long it would take before this technology reached those people. And so that day in December, I became the founder and project manager of Laptops for Egypt and have since begun a fundraising campaign to raise $25,000 to bring 100 of these to my family's home country of Egypt. All along the way, I began to reach out to organizations around Columbus, asking them for money. But I was surprised at the fact that how many people turned me down, turned my story down, all because of the fact that I'm just a 17-year-old girl, because I'm just a teenager, and because I'm not an adult. I don't have any experience in fundraising, I don't have any experience in campaigning for money, and so people often turn me down. I have lost several opportunities, unfortunately, to spread the word about this incredible need in Egypt, all because I'm not an adult. So we as teenagers are, and young people, we're often faced with people telling us that we can't do something because we're too young, because we're too experienced. I could have very easily let that discouragement get to my head. I could have very easily waited until I graduated from college and gained more experience before I started to tackle such a huge project. But somehow, something deep within me couldn't let me continue to live here in America, surrounded by books and technology and devoted teachers, all while my Egyptian counterparts halfway across the world have no idea what they're missing. I couldn't continue to live like that. And all I'm saying right now is that we have to stop being passive. When we see an issue in this world that bothers us, we can't just continue to think that someone else is going to come in and set the problem right someone else will donate to the project, or someone else will handle the situation. Because in truth, what's happening is that people just like you and just like me all over the world are watching those same news reports, reading those same news stories about problems in this world that need to be fixed. And do you know what they're thinking? They're thinking, oh, don't worry. Someone else will handle the problem. Someone else will take care of the situation. But what's going to happen is that if we all continue and sit around and wait for someone else to magically appear and set the world straight and save all the problems, then guess what? Nothing's ever going to get done in this world, ever. And if we as young people are not the ones to take responsibility for the problems that we're going to be faced with in the future, well, we're going to have to face them eventually, and we might as well start now. So what's the lesson here? Number one. Don't ever let your age limit you in any way. Don't feel that you're too old to believe that dreams can come true, and don't feel that you're too young to believe that you can make a difference, because you can. Number two, turn every setback into your advantage. When my parents told me I couldn't go on the trip with my classmates to the Caribbean, I was devastated. But now, looking back, almost three years later, I realized that that was probably one of the best things that ever happened to me. If I had gone on that trip, I probably would not have become so passionate about bringing these laptops to my family's home country of Egypt. And number three, find a passion, something in this world that bothers you, and fight for it. It's up to us to fight for the change that we want to see in this world and not wait for someone older, richer, smarter, or even more experienced to come and do the world for us, work for us. Find something that bothers you. Find something that genuinely gets at your heart, whether it's bringing laptops to a poor country in, in the Middle East, ending world hunger, or finding a cure for cancer. They're all the same. These are all problems that hit deep, deep down within each one of us. For me, it's these kids I live for. And for you, you have to find something that you want to live for, too. Because if you want to find change in this world, you have to be the one to raise the bar first. Thank you.